with our next departmental budget discussion. Don't see any council members joining us yet. So uh, I'm Mayor David Briley. I'm joined today by uh, Emily Passini, the chief of staff here in the mayor's office to my right, and Talia Lomax O'Neill, the city's finance director here to my left. Uh, I've been starting off these with a, a little discourse about last year's budget and uh, and the cost of living adjustment. I'm going to not belabor that uh, with uh, WeGo uh, Public Transit because uh, we don't really control your your the compensation of your employees over there. Uh, well, I guess they're anyway. That's complicated. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, but uh, last year's budget was a unique budget for the city, and uh, we've been able to, in the last few months, uh, manage our expenses pretty well. And uh, we've had revenue growth this year, which is important, and we'll be able to give a cost of living adjustment to our employees here, and uh, which is an important step about, uh, in terms of acknowledging their importance to the city. Our next budget discussion today is with WeGo Public Transit. And um, we're joined by Steve Bland and colleagues. If you would uh, introduce yourself and uh, your colleagues, and uh, we'll probably have a few questions at the end. Uh, thank you, Mayor Bradley. Thank you, uh, Ms. Passini, Ms. Lomax O'Neill. With me today, to my right, your left, is our board chair, Gail Carr Williams, longstanding board member uh, of the Metro Transit Authority Board. To my left, your right, is our chief financial officer, Ed Oliphant. And also with us today are our Chief Administrative Officer, Rita Roberts-Turner, our Media Relations Person, Amanda Cleland, and our Government Affairs Person, Eric Beyer. Um, I specifically want to thank Gail, because she's the only one of us here today who's mm -hmm. not being paid, and she gives countless hours <laughs> to the organization um, and has had a lot of wisdom and a lot of history and a lot of thought over the year and is truly invested in the organization. Well, lucky me. <clears throat> it's good. It's just so great thing that I get to do, so thank you. First thing I'll do is recap some of the past year. It's been eventful on a number of fronts. Uh, of course, the most visible event uh, over the past year was the decision by our board to rebrand MTA services to the WeGo Public Transit brand. This rebranding initiative was in response to customer-focused research during the motion planning process that pointed to simplifying our services and our message and providing a less institutional and a more people-forward image. Market research that we've conducted prior to and after the change has shown extremely positive preliminary results, um, with over 25% of all Davidson <coughs> County residents being aware of the WeGo brand within three months of the conversion, and a statistically significant improvement in both overall perception of the service and a higher likelihood of using the service in that period. Just this past month, the Board of Directors of the Regional Transportation Authority Board also voted to convert their brand to the WeGo brand with commuter bus service being branded WeGo Public Transit and rail service being branded the WeGo Star. Uh, and the intent is to create a more seamless and simple network. Thanks to the financial support that's been provided by the Mayor's Office and Metro Council, in the current fiscal year, we were able to sustain a number of service enhancements enacted during the FY17-18 year through the full 12 months of fiscal 18-19. Uh, thanks to careful fiscal oversight by our board and prioriz prioritization activities, this was accomplished with a flat um, level of funding in the current year. And among those service enhancements enjoyed by our riders were the extension of the Music City Circuit free downtown circulator to North Nashville, Tennessee State University, with an increase in frequency. Um, increasing frequency on our Route 18 airport service, increasing frequency on our Route 22 Bordeaux line, an extension of the Route 19 Herman bus to serve the nation's neighborhood, and the reinstitution of free transfers along with a corresponding decrease in pass and multi-trip ticket prices. So overall this year, Nashvillians are saving over $3 million in transit fares relative to what they had been prior, and about 50,000 transit uh, free transfers a month are being issued. We also know that ridership increases when we improve service, specifically frequency and span. And the services that we have focused on improving are seeing increases. We've seen a 6.5% increase on the 18 airport bus, a 14.3% increase on the 22 Bordeaux, and a 38% increase on the combination of the Music City Circuit, Jefferson Street bus from the prior quarter. 
Um, the current years have also been marked, and I know it's a theme of your administration, Mr. Mayor, um, the continuation and startup of several key partnerships with other metro entities. So some of those I'd like to highlight. We continued our partnership with the Metro Homeless Impact Division to provide free transportation to those seeking to escape chronic homelessness. To date, the Metro Homeless Impact Division reported that 246 individuals who participated in the program have become permanently housed, that 79% of all participants entering the program are achieving the goal of permanent housing, and that the average uh, duration from entering the program to achieving permanent housing is about 111 days, and to date we've had 190,000 trips taken in that program. We continue to work closely with Metro Information Technology on the implementation of our long-awaited account-based advanced fare collection system, which will include uh, account-based smart card and mobile payment options. It is also designed in an open architecture environment to be operable with other mobility options like rideshare, parking, and potentially other Metro services um, that IT works with. We're partnering with, uh, I know you just met with Public Works, we're partnering with them on a number of corridor projects, none of them larger than the Murfreesboro Road project that's now under construction. When it's completed in May, we'll see enhancements at 41 intersections with pedestrian and bus passenger improvements, real-time digital information at bus stops, five queue jumps to help our service reliability, help us kind of leapfrog traffic at some of those key congested intersections, and probably of importance to an awful lot of folks in the Southeast Corridor is a state-of-the-art adaptive traffic signal system centrally controlled by Public Works uh, out of their facilities that also incorporates transit signal priority. So when our buses are late, uh, they will get some form of transit signal priority into that system. We're nearing completion of design on an upgrade to 20 stops along the Nolensville Pike Corridor. We've been collaborating with Public Works and TDOT on the design. That project is in permitting now. We expect to go into construction by the end of this summer, and uh, construction will be complete during 2020. With the completion of that project, our passenger waiting shelter program will have expanded by about 90 percent in a four-year period, and over half of our riders will be able to wait for their trip under cover. In conjunction with the rehabilitation of the Hillsborough High School, we are partnering with Metro National School District to create a neighborhood transit center at that facility, um, a, a multimodal facility adjacent to the high school um, right on Hillsborough Pike. And apart from the hundreds of high school students who use this uh, stop on a day-to-day -day basis, it will be a center of mobility activity for the Green Hills neighborhood. To promote even greater public-private partnership in our stops and our shelter program, we partnered with uh, Public Works, with TDOT, with Walk Bike Nashville on this document, Transit Design Guideline Manual, targeted for developers, both public and private sector, to uh, talk about how they might better incorporate transit facilities such as stops, shelters, transit centers into future uh, development projects in the city. Um, last fall, as you know, we were pleased to learn that WeGo had received one of the largest discretionary bus replacement grant awards in the nation. We received $9 million from USDOT. That leveraged $4.5 million of State Improve Act money to help us refresh our fleet. And in the past year, we've put 41 new buses into service. We expect delivery of another 10 this fall. 19 additional access ride vehicles. Two additional electric buses will be received this year. Um, all this amounts to, with pending awards, uh, about a third of our fleet being replaced in a three-year period. And this infusion of new fleet is not only helping our service reliability, but also reducing parts and uh, repair expense. Um, with respect to our access ride system, which is our door-to-door -door service for persons with disabilities, several initiatives to report. We've expanded our pool of taxi service providers to help us with our peak demands from one provider to four. That's helped us to increase the on-time performance of this particular service. And we're also in the midst of an, a pilot program, Access on Demand, where riders can get trips uh, up to two hours in advance. The typical reservation process on Access Ride is you call the day before, so this allows for same-day service. And even though the, pro the program is still in its infancy, about 11 percent of our total customers are using it, even though it does charge a premium price. Uh, for the upcoming fiscal year, uh, we look to continue some of the momentum that's been achieved. 
there will be a challenge in the upcoming budget environment. Um, although we've put in aggressive cost controls and refocused priorities to allow us to stay within a flat budget for this year, and we actually were able to reduce our unit cost of service per hour, there are a couple of external factors that will impact us fairly heavily in the upcoming year. And for clarity, our, our budget submission was separated into two tiers. One tier is essentially what I would refer to as a status quo, services remain as is, fair structures remain as is, uh, and I'll cover that first. One of the challenges in the upcoming years, we saw an actual reduction of funding of about $3.8 million through the prior administration of Tennessee Department of Transportation and CMAC funds dedicated to specific services. So without those funds in place, that leaves an operating budget gap that we will need to make up in one way, shape, or form. Uh, we've seen increases, as many entities have, in health insurance claims and actuarial results for, for larger scale cases to the tune of about $1.2 million, and then general inflationary pressures. Uh, all of this leads to a projected shortfall, budget shortfall, of about $8.7 million that represents our Tier 1 request. Beyond Tier 1, we know the most frequently requested service enhancements from our riders are, uh, and a key principle of our service designs moving forward are improving the span and frequency of services. So we've requested an additional $5.3 million to operate service later at night on our key routes. Uh, to improve our off-peak and our weekend frequency on key routes and to expand the availability of our access on demand service. So those are uh, in accordance with the end motion strategic service plan. Turning over to the capital plan for a moment, most of the requests are centered on our matching requirements for available state and federal grants that are key to both sustaining our capital infrastructure, but also supporting our preventive maintenance requirements and our transit asset management plan for sustaining a state of good repair in the system. Um, Six and a half million dollars is requested to leverage those state and federal funds, and they would leverage about $32 million in outside resources. Next in priority is the timely replacement of fleet that has extended beyond its useful life, both of our buses and our access ride vans. So there is a request for about $16 million for that purpose. And then uh, one that I know is near and dear to a lot of hearts in the community are funds to expand our transit passenger waiting shelter program. In the case of that program, we've knocked off most of the low hanging fruit where we can simply bolt a shelter to the sidewalk, so we work collaboratively with Public Works on si overall site improvements uh, where we're able to site those in places of significant boarding. Next thing I would do is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, and then finally we're requesting funds to match state and federal planning and design funds to partner with Public Works and Metro Planning to take a look at the Dickerson Pike Corridor and how we might uh, advance mobility options in that corridor. With respect to the Blue Ribbon Commission uh, recommendations, our board vetted a number of suggestions that originated in our staff into three specific recommendations that we included in the submission. One focused on the revenue side, one on the cost side, and one on a, on a longer term review. Um, on the revenue side, it would be an effort to partner with the mayor's office and the business community to expand business participation in our sponsorship and employee pass programs. On the expense side, particularly on the capital side of the ledger, is a revisitation of our policy of purchasing hybrid electric coaches in our transit bus replacement program. They are certainly more environmentally friendly, more fuel efficient, but they do come at a, at a very high cost premium um, and require midlife overhaul. And then finally, um, we're suggesting a collaborative study with Metro Nashville Police on a full examination of best practices for transit policing and security. We enjoy a great relationship with Chief Anderson and Metro Nashville Police. Uh, they're a true enhancement to the system. Um, but, you know, it may be worthwhile to examine what best practices are around the country. So with that, Mr. Mayor, uh, we appreciate the support that you, um, that your office, your administration, and the Metro Council has uh, shown to WeGo in the past. And I think we're ready to take your questions. Tell you. Uh -huh. I just want to make sure I understand what the announcement was the other day about RTA that I just heard 
on the news, kind of a, a partnership, or they're rolling into MTA? Or something. What, what exactly oh, is this? That was just the adoption <laughs> of the WeGo branding. Is it just scheme? the branding yeah. of the name? Yeah. But nothing operationally? Right. As you're aware, the Regional Transportation Authority contracts with the Metro Trans Transit Authority mm -hmm. to manage their services. So there's mm -hmm. already a lot of, for lack of a better word, cross-pollination. So the vote that the RTA made was to simply adopt that brand so that we have a seamless to the general public brand. So the books remain segregated. They're separate entities, separate organizations. The only thing that changes is you'll start seeing purple on the train and on the... Uh, on the commuter buses. Okay. So we we do provide a significant uh, subsidy for the mm -hmm. uh, rail? Predominantly rail, right? Um, but both rail and bus. Uh, can you give us an update on what's going on with that? Sure. Well, the request this year is unchanged on the operating side from prior years. It's a million, $1.5 million on the rail side. About 320,000 on the bus side, so there's a request for a 0% increase there. Um, you know, and then there's ongoing dialogue with the regional mayors about long-term funding, um, you know, for the Regional Transportation Authority. I was just curious if anything was going on with the hours <laughs> to on the train, because those No, we, we curtailed, curtailed. Um, as a result of a regulatory requirement this mm -hmm. past year, we eliminated the Friday night trip on the train. That was not really a budgetary issue. It was a regulatory issue. Mm -hmm. uh, under federal rules, federal railroad rules, we would have, would have been required to install what's called positive train control at those level of trips, which was about a $25 million investment. Um, and frankly, there were other more pressing capital concerns for the RTA. So we pursued and were granted by the um, Federal Railroad Administration a waiver from that requirement, but the condition is no more than 12 trips per day, which is what the normal STAR operating schedule is. We are doing right now a technical study of the STAR. An outside engineering firm is looking at, well, what improvements, what are the range of improvements you'd need to make to be able to add more trips, more service, mm -hmm. or other enhancements like speed enhancements. We expect that to be done by the end of summer, early fall, and then would be able to present to TDOT and the RTA board uh, what those findings are. Okay. And I think my last question just has to do with your uh, labor negotiations. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the status of those? Are they ongoing as we speak they today? They are ongoing, yeah. Uh, do you have a plan for wrapping that up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as we possibly can. We, okay. we, are, we are closer than we have been, okay. but we continue to work out some details and look forward to wrapping that up probably within the next 30 days. Okay, so what are your budget assumptions in this package that's in front of the mayor? In terms of, uh, yeah. well, predominantly it's in the wage area and it's uh, yeah, was that's what I'm in the 2%. Two, 2%? Two two percent. Two percent? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the, the state's decision to reallocate the CMAC uh, grants mm -hmm. away from we go towards, I think, towards regional, con what they consider to be more regional concerns. Is that, was that what the result of the transfer was? Well, specifically, uh, the dollars weren't necessarily taken from WeGo and given to the RTA. Um, they were certainly taken from WeGo and spread out among other uses. But in the prior administration, they had clearly articulated that they felt the role of state <laughs> funding for operations was in the regional realm and not in the local realm. So um, it would have been the same if it were, you know, Memphis or Chattanooga, but without a doubt, the policy direction um, of the prior TDOT administration was that they didn't consider it an appropriate role, you know, for the state to um, do that on a discretionary basis. As you know, we're having conversations with the new administration. It might be a little premature to know exactly where they'll go. Um, but we're certainly hopeful to reopen that that conversation. And is there any, and so in your presentation it says it assumes a $4.9 million subsidy from the state operating, for operating support. Yep. Is, in the, that number is still that subject to? That should be to, safe, yeah. yeah. That's more of a formula-driven uh, appropriated number, so that, that's sort of uniform okay. across the state. 
Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you very much. Thanks for, thank you. for coming in today. Thank you.